Exumites in early America. The Exumite people were Ethiopian people, or people who lived in East Africa. Although we know much about the Exumite Empire, very little is known about the Exumites who discovered America hundreds of years ago. In the 21st century, there are many Ethiopian communities in the Western Hemisphere. Although we believe that this is the first time that Ethiopians have been here in great numbers, it would appear that during the Arwe and Exumite empires, Semitic or Puntite-speaking Ethiopians discovered South America, explored South America, and left many ancient artifacts. There are many elements of Ethiopian civilization found in South America. Between 1300 BC and AD 600, Blacks from East Africa and Asia began settling in South America. Many African skulls have been found in Ecuador, in sections of Chile, and in Valdivia, among the Punueco of Peru. Carlos Marquez in Estudios Archeologias y Ethnográficas notes that it is good to report that long ago the U4 America was also a Negro continent. Marquez insisted that the Otomis of Mexico, the Caracola of Haiti, the Aquas of Culara, the Aravos of Orinoco, the Porcillas and Matayas of Brazil, Manabis of Quito, the Chuanas of Darien, and the Albinos of Panama are the remains of the former African tribes that settled, civilized, and lived in the Americas. Ecuador has provided much archaeological evidence for the presence of Africoids in South America. One of the greatest finds was a magnificent stone head of a male wearing a circular earring on his right ear. This head is similar to the carving of Akhenaten. Dr. von Woodenau had identified this figure as representing the Negroid element in pre-classical Ecuador. Jacinto Camano notes that of the skulls discovered in Ecuador, Many were blacks, especially among the Mochicas. In Punin, he noted that practically all the skulls were of Africoid and Oceanic type. And at Tijuanaco, Peru, there are numerous carvings of blacks that have been discovered. Moreover, persistent oral traditions around Lake Titicaca recall the bearded people who were exterminated by Indians. These bearded people were Africans. According to Lanning, there was a possible movement of Negritos from Ecuador into Piura Valley, north of Chicama and Viru. He believes there is a relationship between this culture and the Valdivia site, which was active from 1800 BC to AD 100. Dr. Dixon said Valdivia was inhabited by Africoid people. There are many correlates between Ethiopia and early Ecuador and Peru. In Peru, on ceramic pots, Large double-deck boats are depicted which are almost identical to the papyrus boats used in the Proto-Sahara and ancient Punt. On the lower deck of the boats are painted a number of water jars and other cargo, along with rows of people. On the upper deck, there stood the earthly representation of the sun god Ra, the same as the sun god of Mero and Egypt, surrounded by birdmen who were handling the ropes to propel the ship through the water. The interesting thing about these pictures is that they are almost exact replicas of scenes depicted on the Egyptian pyramids. Today, boats made of bundles of reeds lashed together are found in Ethiopia. Along the Peruvian coast and at Lake Titicaca, where tradition has it that bearded men were destroyed by the local Amerindians. Indians. There are other similarities between Ethiopia and Peru, Ecuador. The Ethiopians used battle clubs in war. As a result, their doctors became skilled in trepanning, or true cranial surgery, without killing the patient. This operation was unknown to Europeans until after Columbus discovered America. Yet it was known to the Peruvians. Both groups also used false beards on mummies. The ancient Peruvians manufactured bricks of sun-dried clay mixed with straw using the same formula of the Egyptians and Ethiopians. The Peruvian adobes were made in a rectangular mold, just like in Ethiopia, and Peruvians and Ethiopians used a horizontal loom staked on the ground, along with the vertical frame loom with two warp beams. Von Hagen noted that the looms 
Used by the ancient Peruvians are identical with those of other civilizations with which they had allegedly absolutely non-contact. A form of backstring loom was used in Egypt. A horizontal loom appears in pre-dynastic Egypt, and the one pictured on the tomb of Kenelotep at Beni Hassan circa 1900 BC is identical with those of Andean and coastal Peruvians. The Ethiopian explorers in America who landed in Peru, Ecuador, probably reached here originally by accident. Yet, the considerable number of blacks with beards on Machika Art show there were many of these Zumites living among the Mochicas. There is a long tradition of navigation among people in East Africa. In the Sumerian records, we hear about the sailors from Maluha taking goods to ancient Sumar and Akkad. Ancient Maluha to the Mesopotamians was called Put by the ancient Egyptians. The Egyptians record many exciting things sold from ancient Punt. The people of Punt lived in an area stretching from the eastern desert of Egypt eastward to the Red Sea in Central Africa. These people spoke Puntite or Semitic languages. In the ancient literature of Kemet, Egypt, and Mesopotamia, Punt was recognized as a sea power. From ports along the Red Sea, the people of Punt traded with Kemet, ancient Egypt, Arabia, West Asia, and Mesopotamia. Modern Ethiopia is, is part of the land known to the Egyptians as the lands of the gods. The inhabitants of Punt, on the other hand, called their country Arwe. It was from here that the Semitic-speaking nations moved northward into Arabia and Mesopotamia. The Chinese and Arab record records make it clear that later in history, the uh, people who used to live in Maluha or Punt formed a civilization called Axum. The Chinese and Arab records make it clear that the Axumites made many long voyages in the Pacific and Indian Oceans. These sailors made these voyages in mid-ocean, not coasting near the shore. Here is an East African ship carrying foreign passengers to sites along the Indian Ocean. The Exumites controlled much of Arabia, India, and parts of Southeast Asia when the Mochica Empire was in existence. We can hypothesize that a group of Ethiopian merchants, probably on voyage to China, Sri Lanka, or Malaysia, or on a military campaign to put down a rebellion in one of their Indian Ocean colonies, was captured by the equatorial countercurrent in their papyrus boats and carried to Peru, Ecuador. Merchants from Exum made long voyages in the Pacific and Indian Ocean. The Exumites probably landed in the sparsely populated area in Peru, Ecuador. In these areas, they would have met little resistance from the local Mary Indian groups, who saw them probably as giants. This was due to the fact that the uh, Exumites would have maybe been taller in height. The experience of Exumites in other uh, parts of, the, uh, new parts of uh, the Indian Ocean would have meant that when they came, they would have been very much prepared for an encounter in these areas. We can hypothesize that a group of Ethiopian merchants, probably on a voyage to China, Sri Lanka, or Malaysia, on a military campaign to put down a rebellion in one of their Indian Ocean colonies, was captured by the equatorial countercurrent in their papyrus boats and carried to Peru, Ecuador. Merchants from Exum made long voyages in the Pacific and Indian Oceans. They made long voyages mid-ocean. They didn't sail along the coast. The Exumites probably, once arriving in Ecuador, began to set out into the uh, culture or other parts of the country away from the coast. The experience of Exumites in building underground dwellings made it possible for them to construct safe habitation complexes that they could not uh, be uh, exposed to any attack from, uh, from any of the local people. As in Moreau, the uh, Exumites built pyramids, and these pyramids in Peru were made of bricks and other artifacts. These uh, Africans, they probably migrated not only uh, from uh, along Peru and Ecuador, they also probably made their way to uh, Lake Titicaca. At Lake Titicaca, high in the Andes, there are numerous monoliths made in human form and reed boats. 
These same boats were used as far as California when the Spanish arrived. The reed boats were first introduced into Peru by the Exumites of Moshe. The Moshika seldom were without these boats. At Tiwanaka, you can find many artifacts that relate to these Exumites. They left many and important artifacts. There are there is evidence that the uh, Exumites probably uh, introduced the battle, the battle club in war. As a result, Exumite doctors became skilled in trip painting or true cranial surgery without killing the patient. This operation was unknown to Europeans until after Columbus discovered America, yet it was known to the Peruvians. Both the Peruvians and the Exumites used false beards on their mummies. The ancient uh, Peruvians manufactured bricks of sun-dried clay mixed with straw using the same formula that the Egyptians and Ethiopians did. It is interesting to note that the Peruvian adobes were made in a rectangular fashion, just as those as houses in, in uh, ancient Ethiopia. In South America, an ethnic group called the Quechua speak a language which is analogous to languages spoken in the Pacific and India. The Quechua of Mary Indians has an oral tradition which records the entrance of the Exumites in ships made of reeds or rushes that landed from the Pacific coast off Point Santa Elena, close to Puerto Viejo, in extremely remote times. They said, and I quote, that we had a tradition from our parents. These giants from the sea were so great in stature that from the knee down they were as tall as a tall man. It was amazing to see how the hair hung from their great heads to their shoulders. Yet were they beardless. They ate, probably meant they could fight, more than 50 ordinary men. Their eyes were big as plates, como picueros platos. Their arms and legs were proportionally huge. Some were clad in skins of animals, others quite naked. No women came with them. Going inland, they ravaged the country. And finding no water, these builders in great stone set to and sank an immensely deep well in the living rock. And today, in A.D. 1545, the water of this ancient well is so clear and cold and wholesome that it is a pleasure to drink. This well, made by the giants, was lined with masonry from top to bottom. And so well are these wells made that they will last for ages. This was a comment by one of the uh, Spanish explorers who happened to uh, ask the Indians. One of the uh, major sites of these blacks was Tiahuanaca. Wilkin Wilkins believes that these giants helped build Tiahuanaca. Coming in on the inhabitants of this ancient South American city, he noted that they were a reddish-skinned race, though among them as remarkable statuary dug up from the ruined show were also black men with prognostic features. One splendid piece of terracotta depicts in beautiful colors a high priest of the sun with remarkably Egyptian eyes and having on his fine large forehead a mitra and the sign of evolution called by the Bolivian archaeologist El Simbolo Esconado. This story recorded by the Spanish gives us many details of the culture of these strangers who landed in Peru, Ecuador. First, it makes it clear that these colonists conquerors were taller than American Indians. Most importantly, it details how they built great monuments out of solid rock. This architectural ability was a trademark of the Exumites. A center of uh, Exumite civilization was the uh, so-called Moshe, Moshika civilization. On the Moshika pottery, these giants are depicted with black faces. At St. Augustine near the Colombian border, we see statues portraying these giants with African features. These Exumites probably were at the base of the Moshe Empire. The Moshe Empire extended over 220 miles along the North Peruvian coast. It lasted from A.D. 100 to 700 A.D. They farmed irrigated fields of corn and beans and ate llamas and guinea pigs. The Moshe or Mexica built pyramids and adobe bricks. One of the uh, people who did a lot of work at these sites was uh, Dr. Lorco Hoyle. Dr. Lorco Hoyle, in his, in his work, has left us many beautiful sculptures 
and pottery that depict these Africans. He found that during his research that many of the skulls of the Moshika people were of African blacks. The Moshikas were warriors, messengers, weavers, and doctors. They built roads and organized the carrier system, which was later adopted by the Incas. The Exumite weavers of South America usually produced goods on a mass scale. The Ahuanas used by the Mochicas came directly from Africa. Von Hagen notes that the looms used by the ancient Peruvians are identical with those of other civilizations with which they had absolutely none, no contact. A form of backstrap loom, example, for example, that was used by the Peruvians was also used in Egypt and ancient Kush. As you can see from these photographs, as you can see from these photographs, the Mochicas were highly skilled technicians. They made irrigation their greatest concern. In Mochica centers, we find stone-laid reservoirs supplying waters to vast areas. In addition, they built a gigantic network of canals to bring water into the Mochica settlements to fertilize large stretches of sand. The Mochica were highly skilled potters. As you can see from these pottery uh, remains, they made uh, beautiful pictures of their contemporaries. And as uh, Professor Hoyle shows you, many of these photographs were of the Moshika blacks. The Moshika and Ethiopians share many cultural traits. For example, both Africans and South Americans build pyramids to house the dead. At Huanca de la Luna, which is considered to be the capital of the Moshe, there is a step pyramid that was built by the Moshikas. Here we find fine walls, ornamented with frescoes which show pottery vessels and other objects with the men drawn in attitudes simulating war and defense. The Mochica society, as I said earlier, was organized militarily. There was a rigid system of labor organization. There are many scenes of uh, Moshe pottery makers that reveal that the, uh, that the Moshe had the uh, ability to create and do uh, various interesting things, especially uh, this uh, brain surgery, which had to have been necessary due to the use of the war club. The religion of the, religion of the uh, Moshe is identical to the religion of the Ethiopians. For example, the, the Moshe worshipped a god they called Aipak, and Aipak was, was a two-headed serpent. The Ethiopians also worshipped a, a two-headed serpent, or they worshipped the serpent. The Moshe also worshipped the moon god. The Moshe called this moon god Si or Sian. This is very interesting because it appears to be a corruption of the name for the uh, Exumite moon god, which was Sin. Moshe men made many uh, war turbans on their heads or, or caps. Many of these turbans are found in Merodic art and uh, also in Merodic uh, frescoes. It appears that the Moshe were absorbed by succeeding the Indian groups. Much of the Moshe civilization was copied by the Shimu, who built houses out of stone, similar to buildings made in Ethiopia by the Exumites. Another interesting uh, black civilization was Huari. Some of the Ethiopians landed and they uh, went to uh, the Makahasi Plateau. Here in the western Cordilleros, they began the Huari culture. The Huari were mainly African males. That explains, in a sense, why they were there. And they built a beautiful pyramid. They left frescoes that uh, show many of their artifacts. The Huari incorporated an empire they made of most of inland Peru. In their areas of occupation, we find small forts, observation posts, overlooking hills. The Huari made a very interesting monument. And this monument was made out of solid rock. And now this, uh, this Huari monument seems to uh, depict the ebex, lion, elephants, frogs, and camels. And many of these uh, things are basically found in uh, Ethiopia. It's interesting to note that the tribes found in the vicinity of Huari monuments are called Huanka, or Huari. This Huari almost sounds the same as Harari. Harari is the name for one of the uh, Semitic-speaking tribes of Ethiopia. And again, we notice that they built reed boats. So we can see this uh, 
relationship between the Huari and the Exumites. The uh, forefathers of the Huari are only known from legend as the bearded people. The monuments show they were Africans, and the term Huari seems to sound almost the same as Harari, the name of the Ethiopian group. Berlin believes that the large ceremonial center in South America called Tihuanaka may have also been a religious center. Here we find at Tihuanaka many, many examples of uh, Africans in the art. In addition to uh, statues and pottery, the Exumites, they left a number of inscriptions throughout uh, South America. One of the most interesting uh, inscriptions is a subscription near the town of Paupa, some 20 kilometers northeast of Nazca. I know many of you have heard of the Nazca lines in Peru. Here we find an ancient inscription of lines that can be read in the Gia's language of Ethiopia. The Papa inscription is very interesting. It is written in, uh, in an uh, Ethiopian language, and the translation is as follows. Come carve, dig down into the earth, pacify, control, and increase the waters. Make them plow, flow forth into the region, gaining grace and favor. Go out among the people, become strong leaders. As you can see, uh, the, uh, they left this, and uh, as you remember, they also, uh, in among the uh, Peruvians, like to uh, build wells. In addition to this uh, inscription from Nazca, we also have, in a sense, uh, several inscriptions from Ecuador. These inscriptions were found at Cuenca. And Cuenca, we find, in a sense, uh, some um, sheets that were discovered by Father Carlo Crespi. And among these artifacts is one, a gold sheet with a picture of a pyramid with Ethiopian letters at the foot of the pyramid. In addition, we find a stone tablet with Ethiopian writing placed before three animals and a stone pyramid. These uh, figures are very interesting. The tablets from Cuenca were written in two writing systems, formerly used in ancient Ethiopia. The two, the two stone tablets were written in the Tigrinya language, while the inscriptions written on the metal sheet, which has the figure of the lion, a serpent, a pyramid, and elephant, a series, has a series of Thermutic inscriptions. The Ethiopian writing on the Kinka tablet is in the unvowed form. This indicates that they date back to the 3rd and 4th centuries A.D. This would correspond to the Moshe period. Here we see the uh, the, um, the muted artifact. The tablet, uh, the tablet with the sun figure was probably represented Zabadan of the Ethiopian sun god and an elephant. We find reference to these three things, the harp, beer, meat, and bread. These three things are saturated in the, uh, in the region of Tigre in Ethiopia with a man who is about to make a journey or go to work in the fields. Reading the tablet from top to bottom, and right to left, we see the following, the following translation. Zad Baden, strong as the elephant, give me the harp, beer, mead, and bread. It's interesting to note that in Tigray, the men usually drink the beer and eat bread as they go on various trips. The Cuenca Tablet too also has a very interesting uh, inscription. Moving from the top of the tablet to the bottom, we read the following. In war it is the bull, Guma, that causes damage to the enemy, and the elephant that will make the outcome clear. It is the Ibex, symbol of the moon god, that we must confess our sins for deliverance. The presence of these tablets in Ecuador and the depiction of sin carved out of hewn rock and mention of the god in Moshe tradition all point to the Ethiopian presence in ancient Ecuador, Peru. In summary, Africans from East Africa probably settled early settled parts of South America. These Africans of the Moshe period may have come from modern Ethiopia or Somalia, which served as a major staging area for Merodic and Exumite navies that took trade goods to nations in the Indian and Pacific Ocean. This is supported by the discovery of African skeletal remains in Peru, Ecuador. Although blacks came to South America from East Africa, Southeast Asia, and the Pacific, blacks from Exum probably greatly influenced the rise of elaborate monuments and made entirely of stone in Peru and Ecuador and introduced certain important types of blooms and medical techniques. 
They also play an important role in the rise of the Moshika Empire. Yes, indeed, the Exumites played an important role. They made civilization in South America.